We continue to follow the massive storm system that has cities all along the East Coast on alert. Mm -hmm. The latest forecast has Washington, D.C. in the bullseye of this monster storm. Last night, D.C. got a small taste of winter, a little more than an inch of snow fell, and it managed to cripple the nation's capital. With the real storm still on its way, the mayor of D.C. has declared a state of emergency and vowed to be fully prepared for the possible two feet of snow that could fall. Nick Giovanni, our reporter from our D.C. affiliate WUSA, has more. This is the place to be. If you just take a look at this parking lot, it is packed outside the hardware store. And I can tell you, when we first got here about two hours ago, there were bags of salt just piled high, stacks and stacks and stacks of salt. And we can tell you, from that point on, we just saw a steady flow of those bags being wheeled out to people's cars. Everyone getting ready for this weekend, especially in light of what we just experienced over the last 18 hours. The morning ride in was far from smooth sailing across the DMV at a near standstill on I-270 during rush hour in Rockville. This has kind of been a nightmare already. Yes, no good, no good, yeah. The scene was similar in Tacoma Park and Silver Spring. Yeah, so since last night, it took me three hours to get home, and it's crazy. Usually it's like a 45, you know, 45 minute commute. Following up last night's nightmarish commute, drivers still had slick roads to navigate, most notably, down side streets. Since all you see is, you know, the red lights, that's it. It's like you go maybe not even 12 inches and you stop, that's it. Bracing for a potentially historic blizzard this weekend, drivers buckled up knowing this was just a taste of what's to come. So we're just, you know, taking our time. I'm not rushing, so <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not gonna get into an accident. And tell you what, that's the mentality we saw pretty much across Montgomery County throughout the morning. Drivers taking their time, trying to be cautious, and in the end, ultimately, that obviously does pay off. We did not run across very many accidents. Hopefully that trend continues throughout the weekend. Yes, definitely. For more on the travel impact from this massive storm, CBS News transportation correspondent Chris Van Cleve joins us now from Washington. Chris, what are the airlines doing to prepare for this? Well, the airlines have all issued travel waivers, which allow you to change your flights if you're scheduled to fly into any of the affected uh, cities. You know, it's a pretty wide swath of the East Coast that's going to be impacted by this storm. And they'll let you make those changes, uh, e either cancel or make changes without a fee uh, for the period that's that uh, of this storm. What's also likely to start happening today is you're going to start to see flights being canceled for tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, you know, also, there's some concern as this storm moves from the south north uh, about conditions uh, in the south, particularly Atlanta and Charlotte. Uh, those are major hubs. So if the weather impacts Charlotte, that's going to result in cancellations. If the weather impacts, just like when the weather impacts Dulles and Washington, D.C., on Friday and Saturday, you're going to see a lot of cancellations. So, you, you know, you, you've heard people say, we're, if, if you're not... Uh, here by Friday, you're probably not going to get here. That's probably a good way to look at it. Chris, you know, and wherever you end up Friday night is probably where you're staying for a few days. Chris, what about trying to get ahead of this storm? How, how do the airlines handle that? For example, if I had a flight on Saturday, can I then call them today and say, hey, can I leave tonight? Yeah, so you're in this window where you can make changes, and certainly if you can get out now, that's a great idea because you're not going to be able to get out on Friday certainly Friday night, you're not going to be able to get out on Saturday and you know that you may have issues getting out on Sunday. So what the airlines are going to do is they want to try to accommodate as many people as they can if they can get them out ahead of time or if they have to rebook them after the trip, uh, after the storm uh, and delay their trip a bit, that's what they're going to do. Uh, from here, then they're going to look at where do they need to cancel flights so they don't have planes stuck in the ground. For example, you don't want to have a whole lot of airplanes at Reagan National Airport outside of D.C. on Friday night. You're going to try to, you know, cancel those flights, have those planes elsewhere so that when it's time to resume service, you, you have the, the fleet and the staff to do it so that people aren't stranded somewhere mm -hmm. and, and that, that further hampers your ability to, to, to restart service. All right, Chris, I hope you've stocked up on all the essentials for the weekend. D.C. looks like it's in the path of the storm and going to get hit hard. Mm -hmm. Well, Vlad, I will tell you that the frozen pizza section in every grocery <laughs> store I have been to in the last couple of days is completely gone. I don't know how people are going to make the frozen pizza if the power goes out, but uh, that was the first thing I saw people going for. <laughs> nice. I want to know what the liquor stores and the yeah, package right. stores I, are Yeah, right. That's where I would right be now. heading. <laughs> Chris Van Cleve no in D.C. Thank you very much, Chris.